It's Merrick Watts, mate. How are you? Good. Yourself? Mate, very, very good indeed. I've rung you exactly to the second on time. That's what radio people do. <laughs> Legendary stuff. <laughs> we, can't, we can't help ourselves, but punctuality becomes part of our profile. <laughs> there you How go. How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, mate. I'm, I'm actually standing in a dodgy little... I look like a crim because I'm in an alleyway uh, in the back streets of Melbourne, and I'm um, wearing a pair of uh, Nike Air Max and uh, black jeans and a T-shirt, so I look like I'm about to break into a car. Probably not beyond me. So that's, that's not a Triple M listener, though, is it? <laughs> I'm looking probably even profiling myself. <laughs> hey, so uh, it, it's obviously great to be back at Triple M, mate. I'm wrapped. Are you, I said to somebody last night, they've <laughs> got no idea how thrilled I am to be back. You know, people always say whenever they're going to a radio job, oh, I'm thrilled and it's awesome, it's great, and you know, and you know, of course they mean it, but. The level of how thrilled I am, I don't think people could actually fathom. Now, Merrick in Australia, tell us all about that. What's the go with it? Okay, so look, you know, clearly there's no co-host. We'll have a, you know, a rotation of guests and uh, and, and friends who will come on the show as reg- regular contributors. You know, kind of, I suppose, in some ways, similar to the way uh, AM radio uh, works, you know, AM radio shows. I mean, it's not the format itself, you know, one of the most popular formats in the world of having a single host with guests. Um but the difference is, you know, they'll be on FM, so it's not going to be covering, you know, necessarily an AM style of program. It'll be an FM style of program, but with a you know, closer kind of AM style execution. Um, American Australia, because, you know, quite frankly, I, I do kind of look at uh, Australia as the co-host. And, you know, when I was discussing it with the programmers, I said, you know, look, uh, I love the listeners. And that's one of, my, one of the things that I love most about radio. In fact, probably the thing I love most about radio is, getting great stories from listeners and sharing their stories and and, uh, and having a laugh along with them. So I said, you know, these kind of Australia keeps it kind of open and broad, you know, that, that includes guests who come in, friends who come in and the listeners as well. I think it's, you know, the inclusive. So we know you're going solo. If we look back over the years, who has been your best on-air partner to date? Oh, well, most successfully, obviously, it was Rosso. If there was ever a time of the, the band getting back together, if we put it that way, right... Mm-hmm. You would have you would have thought that now would have been that time. Is that is that time gone for good with you guys? Like, would you ever get back together again? Uh, look, I, I'd say look as you say, you know, if it hasn't happened now, it's probably becomes less likely. And it's you know, it's obviously it's not happened on this occasion. And you know, contrary to a lot of speculation, you know, there was never a direct conversation with Tim and I about about working together on this show. So. Um, I know there, there's reports that we were in deep negotiations and something like that, but that's actually not the truth. It was not um, it was not something that the, the pair of us were discussing at all. Um, we were in communication, we we're talking, but we were not uh, we were not talking to each other about a show. There was no, never a discussion about it. So, you know, I think we both we both have different interests now. We're both kind of, you know, uh, I always said this. You know, Russell and I have uh, our greatest commonality was our sense of humour. But we're very different people. You did actually look very comfortable on the uh, on the Triple J documentary together the other week as well. Yeah, well, I mean, look, we're talking about things that we loved, you know, and that yeah. was, um, you know, we're, we're talking about a, a great time and not just in our careers, but also in our lives. Yeah, an important part. So, if we go back to the, the days when you first started at Triple J, um, what mm-hmm. was the, what was the transition like from going from comedy into radio? What was the biggest hurdle you faced straight away? Uh, well, having a workplace and having to, you know, try to adapt to workplace standards, you know, like Ross and I never had, we'd never had proper jobs, you know, we'd never had, neither of us had ever had a full-time job in our lives, you know, I used to work in pubs and stuff like that and, you know, then doing stand-up, they're hardly real jobs, Um, you know, working in a pub part-time or or in a bottle shop, you know, you do actually, you have to have, conduct yourself in a manner that is acceptable in a workplace. But, you know, Ross and I were effectively our own bosses, and then we went into to Triple J, and there was that autonomy that we had um, was still there, and I think that's why I came across on air, like, you know, we were a pair of scallywags, because we just didn't have, you know, those disciplined structures in, as a part of our work life until we went to, to Triple J. But probably, as, as far as an adaptation goes to um, working at the ABC, I think it was probably working with a larger team. Yeah, was was a big step for us. Like all of a sudden, you know, we we're working with um, different departments. You know, the only department we ever worked was with was Merrick and Rosso. We were all of the departments. You know, and then so you know, you go to tr- Triple J and there's a programming department, a promotions department, a music department, and you have to work with all of these different departments and the people within them. Who is your favourite on-air team currently? 
Uh, I'm currently on air. Uh, let me think. What do I? What do I like at the moment? I do like the grill team. I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm biased because they're in my my house. I, I, you know, obviously triple triple M appeals to me. I like the the grill team because I, I like the uh, I like the type of content they do, and I like the way they execute it. They're they're a really rough diamond, and that's what I like about them. They're not overly um, slick, which you know. Quite frankly, I'm not I'm not as impressed by radio slickness. I, I'm impressed by the content and the conversation. So I really enjoy the way those boys go about their business. I like um, Matt and Alex on Triple J. I think those boys are very good. I enjoy their content. I enjoy the way they do it. They're very uh, accessible. I mean, honestly, I'm in Melbourne today, and this is this is probably a better answer to it. I'm uh, not a better answer, but a direct answer. I'm in Melbourne today, and this morning I went in and sat in on the. Um, Hot, uh, hot breakfast show with Eddie McGuire, Darcy, and Mick Malloy. Yeah. And when I say sat in, I sat in the producers' booth, um, the producers' area for you know a couple of hours to watch how they produce their show and to listen and and kind of see how they go about their business. And Mike Fitzpatrick asked me, he said, "Why do you, why are you doing that? Why do you want to go?" Because I asked, I said, "Do you mind if I, uh, if you could ask the producers if I could sit in and watch the show?" And he said, well, what, yeah, sure you can, but why do you want to do that? And I said, well, mate, you learn from the best, not from the rest. And, and they are, you know, they are, honestly, well, they are the only num- number one um, property in Triple M at the moment. Yeah. And they have, they're also, too, they're the number one show, breakfast show, in Melbourne. Yeah. So, you know, I did actually, I learned, learned a couple of things today about the way they produce their show. And I watched the way they go about their business on air and off air. Um, so, although I, like I said, I don't get to hear them every morning, so that's probably why I gave two singing um, shows as an example first. Um, but I very, very much admire the way they do uh, the hot breakfast here. It's very impressive. All right, you can expect from experience here. What advice would you actually give Dan and Maz? Just enjoy yourself. That's, that's the advice. That's the advice I give to anybody in any broadcast capacity. Just enjoy yourself. Yeah. You know, no matter what happens, you know, you have ups and downs in radio, and obviously, I've experienced them all. You know, I've I've had you know, I'm one of the few people can say that they've had the best and the worst rating breakfast show in Sydney in their career. But yeah. you know, that's what that's what the industry is about. It's about ups and downs. It's about imperfections. It's not like everybody just gets a dream ride and then you know you you right off into the distance in a golden chariot. That's not the way it works. But the, you know, even last year, with with all the, the the problems that we were faced with last year, our team didn't break apart. There's no, you know, personal blow-ups. There's no tantrums. There's no carry-ons. And there was never a day where I thought, geez, I don't want to go to work. Every day I enjoyed going to work. You know, I was working with good people. I had a good time. I was laughing every day, and I was enjoying myself. So, you know, there's only so much you can control as a, as a, a you know a, a, a part, a fraction. Of a of a, a radio show, you know, you've, there's producers, there's programmers, there's a hundred people involved in putting a show together, and you're only one small part of that equation. The way the public sees it, and the way you know the press sees it, is that everything is you, that you are responsible for all that. And now you're a radio person, boy, you know that that's just not the case. Absolutely, no, you know, you know, you know, you're only a fraction of of what is actually required to make a show successful. So. Given that, you know, like uh, I enjoyed last year, and that would be my advice to anyone: is try and have as much fun as you can, because the radio industry is a great gig. It's a it's a fantastic job to have, and any time you can spend in it, you should be trying to enjoy it, not worrying about what could or couldn't be, or whether or not your marketing's working or whatever, or you're getting enough support or whatever. Day to day, go in studio, have fun, leave. One word to describe 2014. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think because it's, yeah. it's more than one word. Because yeah. for me, it was, a, a, I would say, learning curve. Learning curve. Right? Yeah, that, I, yeah. yeah, but that's two words. Um, you know, I learned a lot. Um, I'm trying to give another, another word. It's, look, honestly, I draw, I draw more positives out of last year than I draw negatives. Because, and here's the other thing, too, and I've said this before, and it's absolutely true. Had I not taken that bullet last year, had I not gone through the, the harrowing experience that, you know, it was portrayed it to be, if I had not gone through, you know, that, that, uh, the walk through Hades uh, caverns and, and basically just put myself through, through hell, um, as far as, you know, the way it was seen outwardly, yeah. um, then I wouldn't be where I am now. And where I am now is exactly where I want to be. Like, I could not be doing... There's nothing about what I'm doing now that I would change. 
You know, I'm, I am in the, the absolute best position. I could not be more happy. So if, if it meant that I had to experience what I experienced last year, you know, being cut to pieces on an almost daily basis by the newspapers um, to get the reward of this year, then uh, absolutely it's worth it. Absolutely. You know, and I have no regrets. So there's another word for it, but unfortunately it's not, it's not it's, regret. It's actually no regret. I don't have, I don't have regret for last year. I didn't have, I didn't hate my job. I didn't hate the people I worked with. I didn't hate my time. I would love to be more successful, but that's, like I said, it's not necessarily in my control, but it's led me to where I am now. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful. Fantastic, mate. Well, we're looking forward to uh, hearing the show later on this afternoon. Thank you very much, Blake. Good on you, mate. RadioToday.com.au